What motivates a man to suffer? To put himself on the edge of his physical limit and then push harder when reason calls for rest. What makes a man want to race for three weeks? 21 stages at breakneck speeds. No moment to relax, no sleep without the certain dread of what comes next. Who would want to risk his reputation? The glory of what he'd achieved? Not just once, but seven times over for long odds in the world's toughest race. What kind of man does it take to face down a 2,000 mile odyssey? And believe he can make it all on his own if he has to. What makes these men tick? What drives the relentless tempo of their legs? The furious beating of their hearts? Is it money, glory, fame? Or is it simply because someone's really pissed them off? The history of this country is riddled with conflict. From ancient battles to world wars, antagonists have found cause to fight here from the mountains to the plains. In the 2009 Tour de France, the question of who would lead Team Astana drove a divisive wedge between the strongest men in the sport. Despite wearing the same uniform, Alberto Contador and Lance Armstrong's struggle for supremacy spilled into the press and simmered into a heated rivalry. Though team duties kept them from outright racing against each other, in almost every other way, they battled for primacy. Theirs is an epic feud. Uh, as you all know now, I, I have decided to return to professional cycling. I will race uh, in 2009 with Astana. Lance Armstrong's talent to shock is almost as profound as his ability to race a bike. After three and a half years in retirement, he mounts a comeback in 2009 at the creaky age of 37, ancient by competitive cycling standards. But arguably the most famous man in sports, Armstrong has defied long odds before. Pulling himself off a deathbed, he dropped cancer and grabbed hold of an unprecedented seven consecutive yellow jerseys at the Tour de France. Who in their right mind would question what such a man was capable of or his motivation for returning? I would just remind you and, and repeat that, that carrying this Livestrong message around the world, whether it be on a bicycle or, or through, through, through the media, is the number one goal. In his post-cancer career, Armstrong's zeal for fighting the disease was terrific, almost as impressive as his passion for winning. Through the early season of 2009, the former champion worked to put together the elements of his old form. And while the conditioning took time, his feisty attitude seems to have never gone away. You are not worth the chair that you're sitting on, with a statement like that. Despite a broken collarbone in April, he rode admirably at the Giro d'Italia in May and shows up in July ready for the race he'd made his own. This is Monaco, the smallest principality in the world, and it's ready to welcome the first day of the Tour de France. And that man right there is back. Though his overall objective may be to fight cancer, Lance's goal in France is made perfectly clear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm here to win. However, there's one very large obstacle in Armstrong's way. The diminutive Spanish rider Alberto Contador is Lance's Astana teammate and the best rider in the world for the previous two years. Contador has no intention of letting one legend get in the way of growing his own. In 2007, riding for a discovery team still chock full of Lance teammates, Alberto Contador rolled into Paris as a 24-year-old champion of France. Like Armstrong, the Spaniard had fought his way through a near-death experience, undergoing a risky brain surgery just a few years before his tour victory. Le a prodigy in the mountains, and constantly improving in the time trial, Contador went on to win the Giro d'Italia and the Vuelta a España in a span of just 15 months, a historic first for the Grand Tour competitions. In the absence of Lance, Alberto had become the undisputed king of cycling. 
Across a stage built for epic tales, these two teammates set out to realize their personal ambitions. On paper, both have a legitimate claim to lead Astana. But that privilege would be decided on the road. The strongest man would seize the reins. Lance returned from his battle with cancer to demolish the time trial prologue in the 1999 Tour de France. What a comeback this could be. Armstrong is the leader. That is astonishing. It was a giant first step towards wearing yellow into Paris. It was a performance he would like to repeat in Monaco 10 years later. Lance Armstrong is back in the Tour de France. Anything significant, he wears number 22. He's won 22 stages in the past. And there will be a psychological win here if he's the best man on the squad. He is fighting this all the way to the line. He knows from his own experiences that this time trial could make all of the difference for the rest of the Tour de France. Look at his face, Lance Armstrong, seven times the winner of the Tour de France. He hits the line, 2012. He gets the best time. He will be rivaled quite possibly by Alberto Contador, the time trial champion of Spain, Phil, who has got a very strong point to prove with this time trial today. This man, as you look at him, has this deceiving, easy-going style, but the power that comes out of this man's body is frankly quite unbelievable. A great ride by Alberto Contador, who won the Tour in 2007. Contador is second. Is he now the leader of Astana? He certainly laid claim to that. For a 37-year-old man just out of retirement, Lance's 10th place performance isn't bad, but it's a significant way from great. If it were his only chance to make the case for leadership of Astana, he'd be in trouble. Alberto Contador's ridden as advertised. Though beaten today by Fabian Cancellara, everybody knows Alberto will crush him in the mountains. Round one in the Lance Contador feud goes to Alberto. In a sport as physically demanding as cycling, the mental side of things can be easily taken for granted. But rolling along at 50 kilometers an hour, the experienced rider is prepared for every possibility. Oh, and look, oh! But look, he's gone down, and Armstrong has taken to the grass. Armstrong has gone. Uh, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Armstrong is now crossing the course. I have never seen that in my life, as Lance Armstrong is back in the group. With seven tour victories, Lance Armstrong's experience is incomparable. And in an arsenal of dominating weapons, Lance's mind may be its most intimidating. At the 2009 Perry Nice multi stage race, Team Astana worked hard to put Alberto Contador into yellow. But then, on the penultimate day, the excitable leader forgot to eat. His body spiraled into glycogen death. Just a handful of kilometers from the finish, he cracked. And Contador is being caught by the group led by Jorgen Vandenbroek. Kevin Sildreyers will be stunned to the white jersey to look across and see Alberto Contador. 51 is absolutely exhausted. Contador is getting shot straight out the back of this group. He can't respond and get onto the wheels. When the dust settled, Contador had lost the jersey. Astana's work was a lost cause, and Lance Armstrong sent out a crusty tweet from back home in Texas. Alberto has a lot to learn. In the sensational buzz around the selection of Astana team leadership, the choice in attributes seems clear. Nobody in the peloton can match Alberto Contador's physical skill set. But not a soul in the world has won with the calculated consistency of Lance. The early stages of the tour are typically flat and inconsequential in terms of ultimate victory. Riders competing for the overall title ration their energy. They let their teammates do the work of reeling in breakaways, setting the tempo, and doing the hard work against the wind. In the time trials and the mountains, where time can be earned in chunks rather than slivers, that is where the team leaders kick into gear. In the mass sprints that conclude them, these early flat days see little movement in the overall leaderboard. Opportunities to gain time are rare, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. 
a lot of teams had moved up to the front because of the fact that very shortly, once we move away from the outskirts of Arles, we're going to go into a part of the Camargue where there are no trees to shelter the riders from the wind, and we could see a real serious splitting up in this main peloton. 19 miles from the stage three finish, the peloton makes a hard right into a brutal wind. As riders string out in echelons to fight the breeze, a dangerous gap opens between those at the front and everyone else. Look at that gap. Cancellara made the split in the yellow jersey. Lance Armstrong has made it. Alberto Contador did not. And you can see the panic which is on now by the peloton. Contador is a great mountain climber, but maybe he lacks a little bit of experience, a little bit of expertise to ride these crosswinds. It's not his favorite style of bike racing, but those riders who can ride them know you can gain time. Alberto Contador has been caught out, but he's been caught out by his own teammate, Lance Armstrong. But let's not forget, Phil, the Tour de France is three weeks long, but this is oh, the yes. first psychological battle, and things can completely and utterly change once we get into the mountains, but this has been fun to watch. In the stiff wind, there's no chance of the peloton catching up to Armstrong's breakaway group. Coming into the finish at the walled city of Le Grand Mont, a mid-race strategy session reveals how HTC Columbia uses team tactics to set up their leader on the day, Mark Cavendish. It's headwind and Eric said we have to start later than, than yesterday. It's going to be long otherwise. And if possible, stay on the right-hand side for the sprint. That covers him. With their plan in place, HTC Columbia goes to the front and executes it to perfection. Tor Hushov is locked in onto the back of the missile. I think that Cavendish knows it. Now he's going to go up the left-hand side. Tor Hushov, can he use his massive strength? It's going to be close, but I think Cav has done it. Mark Cavendish is unbelievable. Cavendish takes his second stage in as many days. The major development is in the overall leaderboard. But Lance Armstrong has moved from 10th to 2nd. I've preferred to, to stay out of the, the drama and polemics of, uh, of who's the leader of the team. I've won the tour seven times. I, I think I deserve uh, a little bit of credit. Contador has lost time to Lance. With the next day's team time trial, Alberto's tour hopes could take a devastating hit. If Astana does well enough, Fabian Cancellara would lose the yellow jersey to Lance. And it is the unwritten law of cycling. You don't attack a teammate in yellow. Like so many times in the past, Armstrong was prepared for what the road presented. When anybody's on the front and you see a turn coming up and you know it's windy, <laughs> it doesn't take a genius to know you better be there. Despite having won four Tour de France titles with U.S. Postal, Lance Armstrong's mates had never taken a team time trial. That changed in 2003. As the group of men known as the Big Blue Train demolished stage four in a convincing show of strength. And here comes the time check now. I have a feeling, Paul, that this is going to be the best time. Winning the team time trial by over 30 seconds. As they come to the line now, watch the clock. It's the best time. That was a superb demonstration. The performance slotted Lance one second away from the overall lead and gave him an early, decisive advantage over his chief rivals. At the 2009 Tour de France, Astana boasts one of the strongest teams in cycling history. Lance Armstrong and Alberto Contador have eight tour victories between them. What they do not share is a clear understanding of who will lead the team towards Paris. Both men had legitimate claims for the privilege, but only one can land the role. The early stages are a bare-knuckled audition. Welcome to day four. It's blue skies above Montpellier. We're here in the south of France. It's only 24 miles, but it's the team time trial day. The team time trial can be an unforgiving event in the Tour de France. A marriage of teamwork and full throttle effort, riders work together as an aerodynamic band streaking across the countryside. In a three-week race sometimes decided by seconds, minutes can be gained and lost in this group test. 
Here's Garmin Slipstream in the finishing line. What is Garmin going to deliver? It'll be a new best time here. They've done what they can do. That's the best time on the board. The Stage 4 team time trial around Montpellier has an immediate impact on the leaderboard. Mostly flat, but stuffed with turns, the course complicates the plans of yellow jersey hopefuls Carlos Sastra and Cadell Evans. Weak teams have cost them serious time. Well, that's Evans on the far right trying to drag the team. He's even opened a gap here, but it doesn't matter. Even if there's a second gap, it won't stop till that fifth man gets over the line. But the real race for the day is between Astana and Saxo Bank. Saxo's Fabian Cancellara wears the yellow jersey, but taking him down is not Astana's chief concern. If Lance or Alberto are to win the tour, they will in all likelihood have to beat Cancellara's teammate, Andy Schleck. Putting time into him is priority one. If they take yellow on the way, all the better. Saxo Bank should be one of the stronger teams out there today, Phil. They've got Cancellara, who's the best time trialist in the world, and they're a very disciplined squad. Just look at these men, Team Astana. This is a team of winners. They're wearing the yellow numbers as the leaders of the team race. And if they win today by more than 40 seconds over Cancellara's team, Armstrong, as the highest of the team, will be in yellow. Well, Saxo Bank have looked good, Paul, but it hasn't shown up yet. The first check for them is 19 seconds down. This is not going to be a great ride, I don't think, at the moment. The faces are looking like they are really struggling. Team Astana, the team leaders of the Tour de France, look how tight that formation is. They are riding very, very well. Lance Armstrong looking very, very organized down there and are moving extremely quickly. Cancellara is taking on the driving train himself. Spartacus just pumping those big thighs. We're looking at the Mario Jean, but is this the last time we'll see Cancellara in yellow? Astana have yet to finish, of course. Cancellara leads all the way, stops the clock, 47.09. For the moment, he is still in the yellow jersey, Paul, but there's trouble a coming. There is certainly trouble a coming, and it's coming in the shape of Team Astana. It's Armstrong who is leading the team over and over again at the front end of this line of Astana riders. He is dishing out some respect this afternoon. These boys are now in overdrive at two kilometers to go. It quite literally is every second that counts. Even Armstrong at last appears human. He's gritting his teeth as they drive up now. They need to kick very, very hard here. My goodness me, we're going to go to a countback as to who wears yellow. Armstrong and yellow jersey leader Fabian Cancellara are so closely knotted, tour judges have to look at the hundreds of a second that just put Lance out of first. It's been a very good day for Team Astana. Four of their nine riders are now in the top ten. And Alberto Contador has reason for concern. Armstrong is a wheel length away from the yellow jersey. If he takes the tour lead, Contador's explosive climbing talent will be negated in the mountain stages to come. Sometimes it pays to be old and experienced and not young and strong, so we'll see and, and I'll take it day by day. With the Pyrenees looming ahead, the internal struggle for Astana leadership is rumbling to a boil. In the days ahead, the Contador-Armstrong feud threatens to explode. The Pyrenees divide two of the major powers in Europe. To the north is France, to the south, Spain. In the Tour de France, the stages spent on the shoulders of these brutish mountains have often decided the power balance on the podium. A good day in the Pyrenees can open up the door to overall victory. In 2007, a 24-year-old Spanish rider named Alberto Contador gave notice that he was a force to be reckoned with. Just 10 years after getting into competitive bike racing, he was in a dogfight for the overall lead in the sport's greatest event. This is a magnificent battle of the climbers. Contador has been absolutely brilliant today. He had it planned. Alberto Contador has got the victory that he wanted. After beating the yellow jersey Michael Rasmussen to the top of Plateau de Bay, Contador would soon take the yellow jersey on the way to his first tour title in Paris.
Stage seven of the 2009 Tour, the first mountaintop finish and the longest day of the race. There is little doubt that a dash of excitement is in store. It'll be an interesting stage. I think everybody agrees with that. What do you expect at the finish for yourself? If Conchalara is dropped and the climb isn't as hard as we all think and, and, uh, and I stay with the leaders, then I, then I can take the jersey. Uh, and what would that mean to you? Uh, that would be great. Like a slow burning fuse, the selection for Astana leadership creates more tension with every passing moment. Lance Armstrong is less than a second out of the yellow jersey. If he pulls it on, everyone on his team is honor bound to protect it. For Alberto Contador, that would all but kill this chance to win his second tour title. A confederation of competing teams with a singular goal. The peloton rides by laws of its own making. Early in a stage, the rolling community works together. Collectively, riders decide which breakaways can escape and which teams should control the tempo. But as the day's finish gets closer, the 180 odd men get down to the business of executing their team plans. In the mountains, group discipline is key for winning titles. By working together, sharing the effort, teammates can preserve the strength of their leaders and set them up for devastating attacks. Just when to unleash a leader's power is usually a decision for the team director. Bill, right from the start, Astana took control of this stage. The tempo and the climbing have had a punishing effect. Oh, this is a sad sight. This is a sad sight. He saw his face grimacing, and now the tempo of Astana has broken the spirit of Fabian Cancellara. I can see Fabian Cancellara sitting at the back of the group. Now, that's not really a very good indication. He's realized that he can't stay in contact with this infernal pace. Well, Armstrong is now the race leader of the Tour de France on the road. All he's got to do now is finish for the next yellow jersey. I have a feeling we're going to see a pretty serious showdown. You look at the faces of Armstrong, Contador, Andy Schleck, Cadell Evans. They know that this is important. It is all Astana. The policy of the day was to ride at the front and crack the enemy within. And that was the enemy that they wanted to beat. The man who has dominated this race over the first week of racing, Fabian Cancellara, Phil, now has lost a huge chunk of time. Contador just sitting there behind Lance Armstrong, looking at the man who won the Tour de France on seven occasions. And uh, there's no need at all, and as I've said just earlier, Phil, there's no need at all for Astana to attack. It's the other teams who have to attack if they want to take the lead in this bike race. Is this Cadell Evans who's launched an attack? Because I think he had to do it today, and he's going to test them. Well, Evans has moved there straight up into third position is Alberto Contador. Straight onto Contador's wheel is Lance Armstrong in fourth. Look at Armstrong Armstrong's there. Armstrong's pushed himself right up behind there. This is the old Lance Armstrong. This is the man that did win the Tour seven times. He is back, and he's back with the same form. Contador queuing up to grab hold of Evans as well. But there's a big acceleration there, and that looks like Alberto Contador. Well, that's the answer if he gets 18 seconds uh, on Armstrong. He'll be the next yellow jersey, but there is the reaction from the field. It is Mano Omano here. At the end of the day, this man needs 20 seconds to take the overall lead away from his own teammate, Lance Armstrong. He started the day 19 seconds in arrears, but he is a great champion and a great climber as well, and he's put pressure on this group. I have to say, this is a bit of a surprise that could be at Lance's expense. Did you see the way he flew away from the field? He is an incredible climber, but he's learned over the last few years to time trial as well to become one of the complete Grand Tour contenders. There's going to be a big battle in this Tour de France. This is only the first battle of what is going to be a war throughout the mountains. Here comes Alberto Contador. Many people thought he would win today. It's the psychological blow and the fact that he's put himself to the top of the, the real contenders amongst Team Astana. And of course, he's showing everybody else just how good this kid could go uphill. He finishes best on the main field now. It's going to be desperately, desperately close. Actually, between Armstrong and Alberto Contador as to who goes in yellow. Contador's attack was shocking, bold, and 
controversial. That wasn't really to the plan, but uh, I didn't expect him to go by the plan, so no surprise. While he may not have stuck to the team plan, Alberto Contador has executed his own to great effect. Part of a breakaway, Ronaldo Nocentini steps into yellow for now. Contador and Armstrong are just six and eight seconds behind him. As they have so often in the past, the Pyrenees have helped define power. The leadership of Astana is not certain, but Contador looks brilliant. With more mountains to come, it seems only a miraculous effort can prevent him from winning the overall. It just so happens his teammate has made a career of delivering just those kind of efforts. Burning up to 9,000 calories a stage, when the peloton hits the Alps, the cyclist bodies are in a frightening stage of exhaustion. There is no way in an overnight they can replace the energy stores they're using in the day. Like mountain climbers in the hypoxic clutches of the death zone, they suffer on an epic level. Their blood is anemic, their muscles are dying, their minds frayed. Most men only hold on in the mountains. An extraordinary few find a way to win. Armstrong wearing number one there, sitting at the back of the main field. And this is very strange for me to see right now because since the start of the tour, Armstrong has been the man on the front of the pack all of the time. Lance Armstrong seemed like he was having a bad day in 2001's Stage 10. But when the peloton hit the first ramparts of Alpe d'Huez, Armstrong pulled up alongside his rivals, including Jan Ulrich, for one of the Tour de France's greatest moments. And Armstrong's gone. A big move by Lance this, and in no reply coming at all from Jan Ulrich. Forever known as the look, Lance buried his opponents, letting them know with the subtlety of a branding iron that their race would be for second. He has given us a tremendous demonstration. Yes, that's the one I wanted, and I've got it. Two weeks into the 2009 Tour de France, and the leaderboard is packed as tight as a country sausage. Several flat stages after the Pyrenees have offered little chance for separation. Ronaldo Nocentini has worn the yellow jersey for seven days. As the course rises into the Alps, no one expects him to keep it. Tour surprise Bradley Wiggins is lingering closer to the top than anyone expected. And Andy Schleck has yet to unleash his climbing legs. Team Astana has two men in contention for the overall, Alberto Contador and Lance Armstrong. Their battle for leadership of the team has provided the most compelling drama of the tour. In the Alps, they'll sort out their roles once and for all. Stage 15 ends with a summit finish at the Swiss Ski Resort in Verbier. With a rest day to follow, it's a perfect opportunity for a major statement. All of the teams of the men who want to try and get onto the podium with the Tour de France field today will be extremely attentive. They're all riding at the moment at the front end of the pack, fairly close to the front end of the pack because they know this is a very decisive stage. There is the peloton. They are massing. The boys at the back are in trouble with that tail of a kite just hanging off the main field here. We're heading for the mountain now, and then it's showdown. We're looking at Jens Voigt, setting up the pace here to try and launch Andy Schleck into an attack. Bradley Wiggins is riding like two men here. He's in the orange, the British rider. We never considered him as a climber. He's in a perfect position now. The yellow jersey is gone. It's goodbye to the Mayo Jour now for Nocentini. Now Lance Armstrong has moved forward. Contador just dances right in the slipstream of Astana. Contador straight across to Frank Schleck. Armstrong is still there. Andy Schleck is coming across to still with Bradley Wiggins. I don't even saw that, but the Contador looked for where Lance Armstrong was there to see what was going on. He's looking around at everybody to wait and see if there's going to be an attack, and here's his move. Well, there's the kick from Alberto Contador. Now, Lance will not respond here. It's got to come from somebody like Andy Schleck. Schleck has gone. It's the two great climbers going one-on-one -on, -one on the climb now. This is the move. 
Well, I tell you what, that was a savage acceleration. Armstrong now will sit here with Frank Schleck and Bradley Wiggins and see if they've got any firepower to try and nail back that acceleration. Andy Schleck was trying to ride across the gap to the man who has been toted as the best climber in the world. And today, Phil, he is giving us a little bit of a demonstration. Well, he can do what nobody else can do. He can accelerate, settle down and kick again. Andy Schleck has got a picture of pain on that face, but he's still trying to peg Contador's escape. Counter-attack, and Sastra's gone. The start may have killed him poor, but he's settled back in now. Well, it was too violent, the start of the climb for him, and it probably was a little bit too violent for Lance Armstrong at 37 years of age, and, of course, three and a half years away from the top end of the sport. But Armstrong mustn't panic in a situation like this. This is only the first day of massive big days in the Alps. He's got his teammate there, Andreas Floden, to pace him up towards the summit of this climb, and he can see these riders disappearing from him one by one. Alberto Contador now is establishing himself as the leader of the Astana team. And boy, when you see him climb like this, who else could there be? Chasing him on the road is one man in second position, Andy Schleck, number 31, the leader of Team Saxo Bank. They tried to set it up for this man, but they could do nothing. Then we have Frank Schleck, Bradley Wiggins and Vincenzo Nibali. They are chasing a little bit further back, but this hill has hit so hard by these boys. It was so difficult to get a wheel. They've hit it so fast. Look at the crowd here watching the best climber in the world come home. This is a terrific sight for Alberto Contador. That's the corner which really hurts. It doesn't look like it, but he's got up right now. He sat back in the saddle. I've got it, he says. Here we go. There's the pistol shot. Alberto Contador's over the line. He's the next Mayo Jean of the Tour de France. Here comes Andy Schleck, the champion of Luxembourg. He's establishing a podium finish in Paris for sure. Wiggins followed by Schleck, followed by Sastra. And here and is now Lance. Lance comes home. Ninety-five seconds behind and several years in front of Alberto Contador, Lance Armstrong looks his age. At 37, he confronts a truth that even an extraordinary man can't escape. Do you think your chances for winning the tour now are over? Um, yeah, it'll be hard. I mean, it's, it's you know, a day like this really shows who's best and, and uh, you know, I wasn't on par with, uh, with what's required to win the tour, so. Are you disappointed with now that you're not going to have a chance to win the tour or happy with Alberto Contador and of course Team Astana now with a great chance to win the tour? You know, as a team, we're, we're strong and, and I mean, there's been a lot of a lot of drama between Alberto and I, especially in the media, but at the end of the day, we, we all sit around the table and sit around the team meeting and say, the last thing we can do is lose the tour. So, hey, we ride into Paris with the yellow jersey on the team. I'm cool with that. I got seven of them at home. For this tour, the struggle for the Astana lead is over. Alberto is in yellow. After the race, Contador says of Lance, he was my idol, but dropping him today wasn't important. He was just another rider. Even the brightest stars succumb to darkness eventually. For seven years, none were stronger than Lance. His awesome energy once used to lead now turns to serve. Last year's teammates are this year's most bitter rivalry. And the road ahead is the only place to settle it. The most epic race ever, the Tour de France, continues tomorrow morning at 8.30, only on Versus. France is a country that honors tradition. From its churches to its sports, there's no moment in the present that's not influenced by the past. When Lance Armstrong retired in 2005, he left behind a legacy that touched all that followed in his wake. And though he was no longer in the race, he was never far from the sport. In the 2007 Tour de France, after his victory on Plateau de Bay, Alberto Contador received a phone call of encouragement from Lance every night, until Armstrong showed up in person to support the Spaniard as he solidified his hold on the yellow jersey in the stage 19 time trial. At 24, Contador was understandably nervous with the pressure of victory so close at hand. 
but he had Lance's former team to steady him, and the legend himself in his ear. In the first stage in the Alps at the 2009 Tour de France, Alberto Contador took the overall lead. And while the giant mountains made Lance Armstrong seem a mortal man, he and teammate Andreas Cloden are in contention for second and third place. There has never been a team sweep of the podium in Paris. Astana could make history. Stage 17 is the last test in the Alps. Now we know that this hill starts very, very steeply. The Schlecks have got to attack. Can Lance Armstrong and Contour and Bradley Wiggins counter the move? But they've got to make it. The yellow jersey is there, nice and comfortably behind the train of Saxo Bank and right in the wheel of Andy Schleck. This is a hard climb. The majority is in excess of 10% gradient. Here is the move by Andy Schleck. Contador is locked into the back wheel. This is a marvellous move. Andreas Cloden is the first rider to bridge the gap. Then Lance has waited for the reaction from brother Frank and has taken his back wheel. Now Wiggins again on the defensive, but he's going forward. He's cracked. Wiggins has cracked and Armstrong and Frank Schleck are sitting on his wheel now. Armstrong Phil here I think is playing the absolute teammate he's still got a little bit in the gas tank and he's trying to see whether or not he can force Bradley Wiggins to do the pacemaking and he's looking over his shoulder he probably knows that brother Frank is coming across the gap and this is a good move for the Schleck brothers this afternoon Bradley Wiggins is being marshaled by Lance Armstrong who won't attack his two teammates up front Cloden and uh, Alberto Contador Contador's moved, he's decided to go it alone. Now, can there be a reaction from Andy after all the work that man has done? Contador is now going for the top. He's allowed himself uh, just under two kilometers to the summit, and he's going for the win. And he's got a terrific lead so quickly, Paul. And again, Schleck has got to answer. And Frank, the worst happened to Andreas. Well, Andreas Cloden was caught up by that acceleration there. Uh, Andy Schleck now with his brother Frank has gone off in pursuit of Alberto Contador. Contador testing the waters here this afternoon, but he hasn't got the gap on the two Schleck brothers. He's looking back now to see that he hasn't opened it up. And Andy Schleck has got himself a little bit angry there and he's pulled himself back to the wheel Ooh. of the yellow jersey it was a terrific acceleration but that's what this man is famous for is the acceleration on the mountains but now all he's done is get rid of his own teammate so it may well be that Alberto Contador has actually created a little bit of a tactical turmoil for team Astana here because Andy Schleck could be climbing up into second place they are sharing turns, the two Schleck brothers at the front of this group, because they're not really concerned about Contador. They know they've not been able to get rid of him, but what they are concerned about is Bradley Wiggins further down the mountain. And I think this is now turning into be a little bit serious for Bradley Wiggins, who is doing all of the work back there with Armstrong following him. That's the attack by Armstrong. Wiggins could not react. Well, he's got to bridge at two and a half minutes and he waited until the moment when he thought that Wiggins had absolutely nothing left in those legs of his and he decided, right, I'm off now. Armstrong was waiting for the steepest part of the climb. He wants to be able to ride down this descent on his own and try and bridge as much of that deficit as he can to try and keep himself as close as possible to a podium position in Paris. Well, Andreas Cloden now, Phil, getting to the top of this climb as he summits the Col de la Colombienne. Armstrong is free to fly as he comes over the top in fifth place over the Col de Colombia. Now it's a do the zip up and get everybody organized and plunge to the valley below. The Alps are now behind us all. Having protected Contador from a Wiggins attack, Armstrong races to link up with Cloden and make up time on the Schlex. But the two brothers have knocked him into fourth. Cloden's now in fifth with little chance of the podium. Contador's aggressiveness has cost his teammate. Interesting attack by Contador, 5K from the top of the Columbia. Did you have any idea what that was all about? Uh, no, I didn't know. I, I wasn't really paying attention. I was just staying there with, uh, with Wigo and with Christian, but uh, I'm going to bite my tongue on that one. Astana may be winning the race, but it doesn't look like they're doing it together. The lake town of Annecy hosts the individual time trial. 
Once again, Contador proves himself the strongest man. No finer way to lead the Tour de France than to do what Lance Armstrong has done so many times, and that's deliver the best time in the time trial. But he's done it by two and a half seconds. Lance is 15th, but still fast enough to climb into third. As Team Astana celebrates having two men with a clear shot of landing on the podium in Paris, an announcement stokes the flames of their intra-squad feud. Lance Armstrong will ride for Radio Shack in 2010. Alberto will not be part of the team. The 2009 Tour de France began on the French Riviera. Known for its celebrity appeal and high stakes gambling, it was a fitting scene for the long shot return of the world's most famous cyclist. Look at his face, Lance Armstrong, seven times a winner of the Tour de France. After three years away from the event, he dominated for a historic seven consecutive titles. Armstrong faced the long odds of a 37 year old body and a teammate flush with talent. For over two weeks, Alberto Contador and Armstrong shadow boxed each other for the right to lead Team Astana. In the press, their words flew like sharp elbows. That wasn't really to the plan, but uh, I didn't expect him to go by the plan, so no surprise. On the roads, the tension between them sparked in hot flashes. Alberto Contador has been caught out, but he's been caught out by his own teammate, Lance Armstrong. But in the Alps, Contador ended all debate of who should lead. He sat back in the saddle, I've got it, he says, here we go. There's the pistol shot, Alberto Contador, he's the next Mario Jean of the Tour de France. The final competitive day for the yellow jersey at the 2009 Tour de France is a merciless climb up Mont Ventoux. 13 miles of sun-blasted heat and frustrating winds. The stage had hung over the race like a dark cloud. For three weeks, the endless slopes threatened to reshuffle the leaderboard on the penultimate day. Armstrong is right there with Contador. Wiggins is right there with Christian van der Veld. There's no uh, chinks in the armor yet. These boys are all in the right position at the moment. This is the race for the final jersey in the Tour de France. Armstrong marking Frank Schleck as all he has to do to hold his third place overall. This surely will explode the group. Andy Schleck, where does this man kick like that from? And where does Lance Armstrong get it from as well? He's, so amazing. he's right in there on the wheel of Alberto Contador and they've got Frank Phil, you're looking at first, second, and third in the overall classification. Andy Schleck, Lance Armstrong, and Alberto Contador. Well, this is a victory for Alberto Contador in the Tour de France now, as he follows the man in the white jersey as they come up to the line. Contador salutes as winner of the Tour de France. Despite its foreboding nature, Von 2 changes little on the leaderboard. But the stage promises great things for the future of cycling. Andy and Frank Schleck prove they are a dynamic force for tours to come. Bradley Wiggins has cemented his reputation as a serious yellow jersey contender. Lance Armstrong has ridden better than any retiree has a right to. And Alberto Contador has shown once again that it will take a monstrous effort to unseat him from his throne. Finally, the end of the journey is in sight. Stage 21 and the peloton rolls along for the largely ceremonial ride into France's capital city. The peloton not exactly flying over the roads of France today, but they are finding the way slowly but surely to the streets of Paris. Team Astana enjoys the well-deserved spoils of their efforts, but success has done little to soften the hard feelings that made headlines throughout the tour. The two-arm salute of Alberto Contador, who wins the Tour de France by a big margin. Contador has won the race. Teammate Armstrong has come in third. On the podium, their handshake is brief. Andy Schleck enjoys considerably more of the Texans' warmth. That night, Lance skips the traditional final team dinner, choosing instead to eat with the sponsors that will support him in 2010. After sharing three weeks on the road in the world's toughest race, Lance and Alberto are still worlds apart. Arriving home in Spain, Alberto says, as far as my relationship with Lance, it is zero. 